Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I am continuing to test out Kerbal Space Program 1.12 and real visual enhancements with my existing systems like the Orion carrier plane which we saw in the previous video and I have made some changes of course since the previous video. I have upgraded to 64 gigabytes of RAM. I got those RAM sticks and that's not really going to help out with the problems that we had in the previous video but when it comes time to putting other things in that should make things a little bit better. Uh, as far as trying to solve the problems that we had in the previous video, we saw that the Orion carrier plane was wiggly on the launch pad. I have taken a look at Kerbal Joint Reinforcement in particular and went into its config.xml and it turns out that somebody decided to switch off the thing that ma basically makes the launch clamps have infinite strength. It's a uh, little boolean called clamp joint has infinite strength and it was set to zero even though it was set to one in KSP 1.8.1 I checked the configuration in that version uh, because of course in that version the Ryan carrier plane doesn't wiggle on the launch pad so I have decided to set it to one but there may have been a reason why they set it to zero and turned it off maybe that's not compatible with 1.12 we're about to find out uh, I have not checked yet because that's the exciting part. Uh, will it all explode on the launch pad? Who knows? So yeah, so I've toggled that. Uh, I have made some other adjustments. Uh, we seem to be a little bit imbalanced before. And so it turns out that, that I saw a tweet. I saw a tweet from Everyday Astronaut and it said that the mass of the Raptor 2 engine is 1.6 tons. Now, I had based the Rex engine on the mass of the Raptor engine being 2, uh, two tons, 2.0 tons. And based on that, I size it to 2.7 tons because it has lower chamber pressure and a slightly higher thrust. So adjusting for the slightly higher thrust and the lower chamber pressure, I got 2.7 tons. But that was based on a 2 ton baseline. Now, if Raptor 2 is 1.6 tons, which seems a little bit optimistic, but if it is 1.6 tons, as a matter of fact, then I decided I could knock down the Rex a little bit. So I knocked it down to 2.4 tons. Uh, that's only a decrease of 0.3 tons compared to the decrease in Raptor 2 of 0.4 tons, but I decided to be more conservative. So that is one change that will net-net mean that the center mass will be shifted forward and we had concluded last time that the center mass was too far back compared to the center of lift. I have also decided to shift the center of mass on the body by a little bit, by two meters. Uh, that can be done just by the structure of the tanks and stuff like that, so didn't feel too guilty about that, but probably going any further than it is right now would be wrong. So uh, there's probably about a two meter fudge room that we can work with, but that's about it. Uh, that basically is all I've done so far. If I need to do more in order to make this controllable in this version, that's gotta be odious because I really don't want to go to any extreme lengths. These are sort of acceptable lengths, uh, you know, adjusting the mass of the engine. It's already a little bit conservative. We could probably knock that down a little bit more if necessary, but. Um, and then I've also added atmospheric autopilot, which I was sorely missing in the previous video. So we've got that stuffed uh, stuff, and we are going to see if it all works. So let's bring it out to the launch pad and see if things go differently this time. In a better way. Differently in a better way. Well, it looks like that toggle is exactly what I wanted, because it's nice and firm on the launch pad. Maybe... Uh, things won't release properly, I don't know. But we're not actually releasing launch clamps here. That's worth noting. The launch clamps are only holding the launch platform. The launch platform is what's holding the rocket. So maybe that's a complication, who knows. Anyway, so throttle up, SAS on. I still don't have my Boca Chica scenery in here. That's gotta require some fiddling around with Kerbal constructs. I can't just place it, uh, get the placement file exactly as it was before. We're going to have to manually place it and see if it's good. But anyway, ignition. And launch. Hopefully this time we will get a nice view of Cape Canaveral. Uh, the launch pad still wiggles a little bit. So much for infinite strength, huh? Nah, I didn't get my little windows for Mechjeb set up yet. 
I may look into just getting the clouds as they are. In one, I'm not too bothered about how they are in 1.8. I mainly want uh, more refined coastlines and details in orbit. It's uh, I mainly want the the way it looks in orbit to be as good as possible. The sea lights I also haven't uh, taken a look at. I really don't know much about how environmental visual enhancements works, so I've mostly avoided trying to deal with that. Oh, I'm turning too fast. I'm sort of I'm sort of mechanically turning at the rate that I do in 1.8, and without real visual enhancements. But there's a little bit more lag in this with the real visual enhancements and in this version. So I have to turn a little bit slower than I mechanically normally do. Honestly, for 64K, the coastline is still not as refined as I would expect. But anyway, I'll be getting my own scenery in for critical areas eventually. Okay, you shut down and roll. I suppose one good thing about this trajectory is that it would certainly be easy to communicate with. You wouldn't have to worry about ground stations. Houston's right there, I mean, you know. Okay. Okay, shut down. A little bit too fast. Alright. Separation. Okay. A little bit of an issue, still, but alright. That, I also shifted the decoupler, the carrier mount, compared to last time. In this phase, I don't know what's going on with all the city light stuff. It goes a little bit crazy between like 130 and 140 kilometers, and everything looks a little bit better. Yeah, this whole thing is maxing out my GPU, probably, and it's a RTX 2070. Yeah, it hasn't been very good about orienting and roll this time. It better figure this out soon. Okay, here's the tough part. Well, part one. And there's Star Stage 2 dying there. I'm just going to have to assume that the Separatron's overheating is going to be considered nominal. Well, it's having a lot harder of a time keeping the nose up. Well, that's not much of a surprise since, well, but I could probably retract the air brakes and maybe that would help? I don't know. Not really. But yeah, we move the center mass forward effectively, so that's not too much of a surprise that it's having trouble keeping the nose up. I mean, I did of course check it in the SPH, and uh, in the SPH it still makes it seem like the center of lift is going to end up in front of the center of mass. But that's only when all the fuel is drained, so that's also a complication. Now, not that we have a whole lot in here right now, but... It is complicated. Invariably, because we've got the engines in the back, the center of mass is going to shift backwards as we drain the fuel. Okay, well, we are below Mach 3. I'm going to try and take control here with atmospheric autopilot's help. Okay, well, we're very far away from Cape Canaveral. Turn around is complete. I'm gonna try and boost back a bit. Oh, that's interesting. The engines aren't lighting for some reason. Oh, so in. 1.12 with realism overall, they have residuals. And so, instead of that being automatically calculated in the mass of the engine, which is 
or the mass of the tanks actually. You would uh, include it in the dry mass of the tanks. Instead of including in the dry mass of the tanks, they've decided to make it a separate thing because they haven't actually tried to do that in practice. I mean, you would never want to do that. That should just be included in the dry mass of the tanks. Um, otherwise, it's just frustrating. Well, at least the RCS can still run. I'll sort of accept that. I mean, 1%, I don't know how much damage that does, really. Let's take a look out here at the center of mass and center of lift and see what MechChip has to say about that. Well, we can see the center mass. The center lift, it says it's all the way back there. So I'm definitely getting mixed messages as far as everything. Because this is like opposite what the SPH says and also seems pretty crazy. <laughs> so, so neither the SPH uh, indications nor this indication here make a whole lot of sense to me. This, it should be plunging into the ground if it's like this. It doesn't have that much control authority. And it's not using all of it either. Um, well, yeah, I'll get rid of those indicators. It's worth noting that in 1.8.1, the indicators were reliable in the case of the Orion carrier plane. I was able to look at them and figure things out from them. We are a way off. Well, that's a whole other issue. We just need to make sure it's controllable. The fact that it's way off is something that I've experienced before anyway, right? That was the problem in 1.8.1 as well, and something that we could do a number of things to adjust for that. I mean, we could make sure that it ends up at a slower velocity, but that means that the payload has to do more, so we have to increase the size of the payload, which is a whole complicated thing. Um, the cloud desync on the map view is irritating, so that's definitely not fixed. It's getting worse. Uh, basically, these the outline thingamajigs are not lining up with the main cloud thingamajigs. I don't even know why we need the outline thingamajigs. Uh, this this bit here. Do I need that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I could just delete that. Honestly, if it's a visual thing that's supposed to make things better, but it's making things worse, um, I feel like I should just delete it. I want to make the nicest videos possible. I should get ship manifest in and purge the fuel to get an actual zero baseline. But I, I don't think it's off right now. I think this is doable, though during the re-entry we were having trouble keeping our nose up and that probably means that I've overdone it as far as the center mass is concerned. I'll probably shift the body one back. I think the engine adjustment, the adjusting the mass of the engines was sufficient, so we'll probably just roll with that. Oh no, I no longer have comms. Uh-oh, it's going too fast. I'm gonna have to try and use Smart ASS, which can Hopefully override that. Oh well, but the persistent, I mean, uh, atmosphere gall pods in charge, shoot. Well, this might be a bad thing to do. Well, Smart ASS is not wiggling around too much. Seems like 4 degrees is basically the neutral angle of attack here. But I'm going to use brakes, and that's going to change, probably. Okay, we have splashed down. Successfully! We didn't even lose the bottom row of engines this time. Or the body flap. Any, any destruction? Oops. Seems like, yeah, it was safe. Alright, so let's go test something else, though. Okay, so I've decided to test out the Sajita rocket. And we are at pad 39A, which is a little bit awkward because it's sort of floating above it. But, I mean, that's the, because the collider for the pad is at this level here, you know, that level. So, yeah, that's probably for the best instead of having a complex collider there. But uh, it looks like I definitely need to put some structure around here. 
and I'll have to decide. I think I'll put the shuttle structure back because it'll be nice to have shuttle launches around here and we'll just do other stuff at 39B and that we'll see. I'll have to see what I want to do with that. There's still the relaunch site structures that are available and I'll see what I place. I'm surprised they didn't put anything in particular but maybe they decided to make that user choice. Uh, I did have the additional stuff that they asked for that adds potential structures. There's the Tundra Space Center and then OSS NTR and those work with uh, Kerbal Constructs and Kerbal Constructs is Control K by the way to bring it up and so we could sort of manifest things though it doesn't look like OSS NTR is popping up so maybe that's my problem. Uh, we, we see Jupiter pads we've got our stuff oh well spawn it'll be under spawn new that, that was just the local instances where's OSS NTR stuff okay so it does have that stuff the crawler ways and stuff like that so we could spawn a whole bunch of stuff and make this all very complicated but for now we'll just proceed and test out this rocket to see whether it works properly uh, throttle up because it's a conventional ish rocket and no frills and it better work so ignition and launch it's got a hefty thrust weight ratio it's really no frills so if the timer goes yellow that's not good there was a sound mod that I had seen at one point somebody was working I don't know if they finished working on it I know that waterfall has its own sound stuff but I, I don't want to have to go through and adjust the real plumes and change everything if possible I don't necessarily yeah we'll see but I did see somebody else working on a different sound mod as well. I don't even know what TUFX is doing right now. Um, let's see, uh, profile KSC. New profile. I mean, but HDR flight. Oh, that blurred things. Um, I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Um, tracking is like that. Light is like that. Main menu? Well, we might need some. Or a uh, serious custom profile. Okay, well, that's serious. That's like for the 60s sort of film thing. Film grain, and there's no grain. But I don't like the yellow. I actually like bluer. I like the more like the 80s bluer. Maybe because that was sort of what I was more familiar with initially. Okay, separation. And ignition. Why would the fairings overheat? I don't know. So we're trying to carry a 15 ton load, which should be the maximum for Sajita. Anyway, we're going to get rid of the fairings, but I don't know. That's weird. Thing, there are a few things that I didn't expect would be overheating that have been overheating, like the separatrons and the fairings. It's very peculiar, but none of it critical so far. It makes me wonder. Well, without all my mechjeb windows as normal, we are in a state of some suspense as far as whether this is actually going to get to orbit, which is fine. Uh, mainly because the stock Delta V counter does not seem to understand these kinds of engines. Now it's in yellow. And we have fewer parts. I guess these on-orbit textures are more, more overwhelming to the system than the stuff in the atmosphere. No clouds around too. I mean I guess there's some over there. But just little light wispy things. It's not too far off from real time, but it's not quite real time. There's also still the residuals thing. 1.1% apparently is what they assume I haven't already baked into the mass of the tanks. <laughs> uh, but we are making orbit. 
so regardless of the residuals, Sajita can do its plan job. We were in a very tight orbit. This should be able to get this payload to higher orbits. So anyway, that's all right. Uh, no problems. Except the performance is a little bit iffy, considering how simple this rocket is. Right. How many parts are we talking about? We're talking about eight parts right now. So that's a bit worrisome. If we've got the ISS in orbit, is that going to be iffy? Now we've got some clouds there. <sighs> to be honest, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure about the clouds. <laughs> I'm not sure about the clouds right now, to be honest. Okay, let me try a plane, and not the F-104 this time. Something a little bit more stable by default. Okay, so here we are with the T-38 that we're going to test, and it was a very stable plane in 1.11, so hopefully it'll be fine in 1.12. The runway I still have not changed. Um, I do think that it probably needs a change, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, we will test this with atmospheric autopilot. I don't expect anything weird, but let's find out. So here we go with Jeb. Um, that was an interesting other sound right there, but... Let us see. Oh, interesting. Uh, it definitely was able to lift off at about 60-ish before. Okay, so it takes a little bit more to lift off. Pitch, we're using a lot of pitch, considering it's an all-moving horizontal stabilizer. It seems like... Uh Like the consumption of things might be okay. I don't know. Is it supposed to be one day? I'll double check the tag life support consumption ratios. Make sure. Uh, double check that against the 1.8.1 stuff. I don't think I would have put a whole day's worth of oxygen, but I'm not sure. I mean, it hardly matters in this case, of course. Well, I guess this is a way to take a tour. Why does it sort of look from a distance like the runway over there is underwater? Is that a mirage? No, I think it's just the color of the ground around the KSC. It had sort of a watery shine to it. But I think it's normal. Oh, the skid strip is right there. All right, oh, let's slow down. Guess we should try that out. I don't know if I can slow down in time in this direction. Okay, locked view. Don't have raster prop monitor in here right now or anything like that. We'll need all the airplane cockpit adjustments if I want to do all that stuff. This is probably too fast. Okay. Coming down. And touch down rather fast, but still. Slowing down. Taking a while to slow down. Probably for the best though, so we don't spin out crazy. Okay, so successful test of T-38. The next thing I will need to do is uh, test out the life support and the EVA propellant and make sure all that is okay. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.